Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Antonio Neves for YoungEntrepreneur.com, and right now I'm really excited to be joined by Megan Casey. She is the CEO of PAC, and so for people out there who don't know, what is PAC? PAC is the new home online for people who love their dogs. It's a website and it's soon to be a mobile app too. And it's basically a place for you to chronicle the life of your dog. And it's creating a, an online club for people just dedicated to you and your dog. Now you don't have to be ashamed of posting your dog on Facebook anymore. You can come to PAC and do it. Okay, so let's come back to PAC in just a second. But you started working in the publishing industry. So how does one who starts working in the publishing and book editing industry end up with a site catering for dogs? Book publishing, I was in business books. That segued into, I started a company called Squidoo, which is a lifestyle publishing platform. People could create pages about recipes that they loved. They could create pages about being a Mets fan or whatever, whatever the case may be. It was sort of like uh, uh, Pinterest before Pinterest showed up. And I noticed that this niche was really, the dog niche is a really big thing and I wanted to go and play around in it. Okay, so if you look at niches, you go from macro to micro. As you look at social networking, right? Um, do you think we're gonna get more hyper, hyper focused moving forward in the future? Certainly people are starting to focus themselves. I mean, the social networks are really more about the platform, the tools, right? Like there is a space that you're given and then you're either given uh, the ability to go and organize yourselves or people try to organize you, uh, give you a place to organize. And so I think that there's definitely natural affinities where things get more and more niche and more and more local. Um, but I don't know that it's gonna be on the exact same platforms that we're seeing today. So people may hear building a community for dogs and they're like, well, how do you monetize social networking or community if I put my dog, uh, say Zoid, on this website? Say Zoid. Right, Zoid. <laughs> how do you make money? I believe in creating value, right? So if you're creating value for the customer in the, this dog owner is here and wants to come back every single day and makes connections and finds joy in that uh, and they're making connections with their dogs offline too and then they come back to pack there's value in us being there for them so i'm not necessarily going to say we're going to slap ads on everything that you do we're absolutely not going to do that so you start to say well as the value starts to go up there's certainly ways where i can design uh, this platform and this club and these products for it to delight these people for me this is the first time hearing about a site uh -huh. like this how do you uh -huh. go about rolling something like this out are you are you doing the standard beta rollout just a few users and then you learn from them or what's the process I really believe that the first hundred or the first thousand users really set the tone for where your site's going to go, especially if it's a community driven site. You want to make sure you have the right people in there. Uh, so we did a sort of weird, I don't know of anybody else who's done this before. We did a one day uh, release of our first feature. It wasn't a full fledged site, one day release. Uh, and just tweeted out from our personal accounts a couple things that said, hey, if you love your dog, you should check this out. Today only you can sign up. And then we closed the site again and nobody else could sign up. Uh, and we got a couple thousand people just from a couple personal tweets in one day. Uh, and now the only way that anybody can join is if somebody who already got in on that one day or somebody who's in now invites you in. We wanted this like organic love referral. Like I love this site, I'm gonna bring somebody else in. We have a lot of young entrepreneurs who, who watch this program here. And I've heard you talk a few times and something you talk about regularly is knowing what to say no to and sure. entrepreneurs are faced with that at all times whether they're just beginning sure. or throughout their career so what is your metric and how do you go about saying i say yes to this yeah. and i say no to that you have to stand for something even if it's that you're standing for something today or for a week it doesn't need to be here's my lifetime stance of here's what megan casey means uh but the minute you stand for something and say you know for instance uh, this week, PAC is going to be all about uh, working with these breed curators that we've got and we're trying to take them from 50 to 100. Everything I do this week is going to touch that. That helps me say no to people who are just sort of asking uh, you know, for help or questions that don't relate to what I'm doing that week. Well, Megan Casey, thank you so much for joining me here. Cool. And thank all of you guys for watching YoungEntrepreneur.com. For more information on topics like this, stay right here on YoungEntrepreneur.com.